Hi, Fighting Gear here. Uh, we've got a new one today that <clears throat> I'm real excited about. I'm a big fan of the XD platform. Have a couple of XDMs, a compact and a full size, and uh, I'm also an MP fan, but big fan of the XDs. Um, I got in one of the XDSs, which is the uh, Slimline 45. I believe it's a 5 plus 1 magazine. And uh, just got it in, real excited about it. I'm going to shoot it today. Uh, normally I don't do the big unveiling, unboxing thing, but since I just got this in, I haven't really had a chance to look it over. It is, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, it's a Davidson's gun. Um, Davidson's, um, they will provide an additional lifetime warranty in addition, I guess that's why it's additional, to the uh, warranty from the uh, gun maker. <clears throat> and I have actually uh, known someone that used that. They had a gun that did not work. Davidson's overnighted a gun to a, a federal firearms license holder and then allowed that federal firearms license holder to take the old gun and exchange it. Uh, it had originally been purchased through that dealer and uh, that was a Davidson stocking dealer which was Silver Creek Gun and Pond, which I mention a lot. And uh, I mean, it was just phenomenal service. The guy had his gun literally within a day or two of it breaking because Davis has overnighted it the day that we called them. So, uh, great company. Um, anyway, this is kind of the, uh, I don't know how much of this you can see. I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but it's kind of the standard uh, accoutrements or whatever you call it. Um, got a lock got the uh, fired shell casing complete with somebody's dirty fingerprints on there. Uh, they're not mine. <clears throat> a little hard to get out, but two magazines, or as the liberals call them now, clips. But uh, I still call them magazines. I don't care what you call them. I just think it's funny that the liberals that spend all the time blasting the guns don't even know what the hell the parts are for them. Uh, anyway, two magazines. The um, I don't consider this much of a bargain. There's a uh, holster and a, um, I guess a, um, oh, that was, I'm sorry. I, that's how much I pay attention to. Mag pouch and a holster. Um, usually I thought they tossed in a um, speed loader too, but like I, said, I don't look at any of it as being much. And there is an extra back strap, which I may or may not take advantage of. I do. Once in a while I change those out. I have a uh, fairly large hand. I'm not a particularly big guy, but I have a fairly large hand. So um, anyway, and then, of course, all the paperwork. And then the, uh, make sure Davison's didn't load it or something. I didn't figure they'd left it loaded, but then the gun itself. Now I'm going to go ahead and take an empty magazine and put in it just for feel. Really doesn't change it much. It is definitely a uh, two finger with one under the mag grip. It, it's, I mean, I, I don't want to use the word tiny, I guess, but it rivals my 709 Slim for size, only it's full 45. Now, holds a couple rounds less. It has the uh, grip safety that is on the uh, XDs. Excuse me. That's what happens when you turn 60. Um, I'm not actually quite there yet. I just round up. It has the ambidextrous um, magazine release. It also, of course, has the whatever they call their version of the safe action trigger. Um, a lot of people have gone to this anymore, and you know, people kind of discounted it when Glock came up with it. But almost everybody uses it now, and it's a it's a, a real good system. Uh, it looks like the standard takedown lever. I'm sure you lock it back, push the takedown lever down, slide it forward. I'll take it down after a while. Um, what I'm going to do right now, after I shut this down, I'm going to shoot a little oil on it, go to the range, shoot it. One thing it does have, I don't know if you can see them or not, uh, it's got a tremendous set of, uh, or a rear, I'm sorry, front, I, I can't think. Um, it's got a tremendous set of sights on it with a front fiber optic that I, I'm not sure if it's showing. I'm trying to look in the rangefinder and talk, but very bright, just eye-grabbing. 
and then uh, the uh, two white dots rear fixed sight. It is driftable for windage, but it is not uh, adjustable for elevation. It also appears to have a uh, the uh, loaded chamber indicator like the uh, Ruger's up on top. That's not my favorite system, but this one looks considerably shorter and doesn't look like that it would get up into the uh, sight plane picture like the uh, some of the Ruger SR9's the, it actually comes up and, it, and it's eye-catching but this one's not painted red and uh, doesn't appear to be that that high so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna I'm like I'm gonna oil this up take it out I'll see you out at the range this is made in Croatia which all the XD products appear to be made there I thought maybe since this was smaller uh, like Taurus they might have had to move their um, their production of this gun to the states. Uh, Taurus produces their larger guns in Brazil but their smaller guns I guess because of some kind of import regulations are uh, produced in America but this one this one says on it made in Croatia so which is fine with me like I say I, I have no problems with that the others are made in Croatia, Croatia and they are great. It does have a uh, a uh, rail accessory rail on it which looks plenty large enough for a uh, light in fact well no I don't guess I do I was thinking that I had a gun light sitting here we could have tried it with but I don't see one anyway uh, it looks like it'd be plenty large for that so I'm gonna shut this down go to the range hotter than heck today so I probably won't shoot this a long time but I will be back right after um, right after I'm done at the range and uh, kind of give you some final thoughts on what I think of it. I'm out at the range now. I've got my uh, Springfield Armory XDS with me. I've got it in the uh, holster that I make, which is the uh, insider holster, if I can get it off my belt here. And uh, you can see it makes a real small, real convenient concealed carry. Um, conceal carry outfit whatever I'm trying to say I don't know combination uh, the gun is clear I had already checked it there's there's no ammo in it I just had that on for demonstration purposes to show you how concealable this gun is uh, it's very small I'm going to shoot it today I'm also kind of going to compare it uh, to a uh, car this is the uh, PM 45 it the the PM45 appears to be a little bit smaller. We were sizing them up a minute ago. It looks like it might be a little thinner. It's definitely a little shorter. It looks like the grip is the same length or maybe a little bit longer. Uh, also, the PM45 appears to be quite a bit lighter. So I'll be interested to see how they shoot. I don't think there's enough difference in the size to uh, hamper the concealability of this gun. And I mean, I just, I really like this gun. I'm not running the car down, but I, I really, really like this gun. I don't have that much experience with the car. But anyway, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this shut down, get this moved down. I'm going to shoot it probably at uh, 7 to 10 yards, try to see what it prints like on paper, compare that to the car, and then uh, I think actually I'll shut it down, move up there and try to hit a few plates with it because I am going to make this my principal carry gun now, and so I want to practice a little bit, uh, not so much for the groups, but just to see how it shoots shooting at the metal plate. So I'll get that restarted in just a second. We'll see how this groups. I've got both, uh, both guns with me. I got the little range holster I make. So got one in there, got the Springfield Armory in my pocket. I don't recommend that you carry them that way. Hopefully the wind's not too bad for you. It's, it's probably making the audio tough, but I'll tell you what, uh, it's already about 100 out here, so I'm, I'm happy to have the breeze. What I'm going to do is shoot two groups. I'll shoot one center, and then I'll shoot one up around the head. We'll kind of compare the two guns. It, it won't be scientific. It'll just be my shooting, but we'll kind of see how they group, how they run. Uh, I suspect the car will hold its own in the accuracy department. Uh, I've always found it to be a very accurate gun, but then, like I said, I'm going to move down and shoot a few plates. Probably won't be out here long today because it's so hot. So... Uh, not 
real tight, but five in the head. I mean, any one of those would do the job in an emergency. So, this gun's clear. I'm going to switch it out. Uh, charge up the uh, Springfield Armory. I do have a magazine full, but nothing in the chamber yet. I'm going to move down and I'll see how it grew. a noticeably tighter group. I don't really think that's the gun so much. Uh, I'm going to move up here a little bit so you can see this is clear. This one uh, has a bright red fiber optic side on it and uh, it's I hope you can see it in the I can't tell if I'm in the viewfinder or not it's so bright out here but uh, it's very very easy to pick up and uh, in this bright light I think maybe I was washing out um, guns also clear uh, I think I was washing out just a little bit with the white dot I'm gonna move the camera down uh, because I got an email kind of accusing me one time of cheating I'm actually just gonna carry it down and we'll just take a look at it uh, somebody implied one time it was easy to shoot groups if you shot the camera off so this isn't really that good anyway, but uh, this way you'll be able to see them. And the uh, bottom group was the Springfield Armory. Like I say, I mean, it is just a little bit better. Uh, a lot of that I do attribute, like I say, more to the sights than the gun. Uh, Trigger-wise, the uh, Springfield Armory a little bit shorter trigger. But really, the other trigger was excellent as well. A little bit longer, but definitely not stiff. The uh, car, a little bit bigger group. Um, like I say, again, I, I attribute most of that to the sights, not to the gun itself. I'm going to throw a couple orange dots on there, run them both through again, just kind of to see uh, if I get the same results or not. So I'll be back on in a second after I reload the guns. Run one more set through each gun on the paper then move down to the plates, uh, put up a couple of orange dots. I'm going to try this again, like I say, because I, I think I can shoot a little better with the car than I did that last time. Much better. Uh, the orange dot helped me tremendously there. Uh, this one is clear. Going to rotate them out again. Nothing in the uh, nothing in the chamber. Uh, that that tightened that up quite a bit. Uh, Going to run one more through with the XDS, and then uh, I'll go down and take a look at those. We'll be done on the paper. Actually, I'll probably have my buddy shoot around too, just to see how they work. Guns clear. Uh, walk those down there. Again, uh, the Springfield might have been just a little bit closer, but those are much, much better groups both ways. There, the uh, the top dot is the uh, car, and as you can see, I tightened that up a little bit that time. Um, having the orange kind of helped help with that. The the very last shot was the the sixth one was the one that went low. I had forgot that I put I had forgot that I put six in there 
and I kind of relaxed my grip and everything, re-gripped it, so I'm not really too worried about that one. The other five were very good. Uh, down at the lower dot, um, as you can see, the uh, XDS again, I've got uh, twice, I've got two in, in pretty much the same hole, and then another hole very close to it. Uh, only shot five through it. It's a five plus one. I'm uh, I'm tickled with it. The trigger's really nice. It, I have several XDMs, and the trigger on this rivals those. So I'm going to load these up and let my buddy shoot around through it and see how he does. And then, like I said, we'll be down. I keep saying it, but then we're going to move down to the plates. Go ahead, Greg. But looks like he's just about got three of them in one hole. I can't see the other two. Got a flyer there. Got a flyer? That's the gun's fault, not mine. I, I'm sure it is. I mean, I, that's what I suspected immediately. I didn't put one in the, in the. Well, he'll do anything to make my new gun look bad, but let's go down there and take a look at him. All right, as you can see, uh, his group in the center there is really, really good. You got four in uh, two pairs of two. One is a little bit low. Um, up here, there's only four in because uh, I didn't put one in the, the chamber and so he got a little bit of a, I don't know if you'd call it a malfunction, but anyway, uh, so there's only four shot. You see it's a little bit more spread. That's the first time he's ever shot that gun. The car belongs to him, he shot it a little more. I think, you know, he's used to the trigger and the sights on it. Plus, like I say, I just think it's a good shooting gun. I think if it were mine, I would end up shooting groups like that as well. Um, anyway, we're going to move down to the plates and see how it busts a little bit of steel, and then I think we're going to call it an early day because of the heat. I'm going to run some hardball through this first, then, like I say, some critical defense, and uh, then I'll probably shut this camera down, maybe shoot a little bit more, but after I get it shut down, I'll see you back at the house. You got your ears on? Nope. But I will. Hold on. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. That was four for five, and I got to take the blame for the one I yanked. See how this bad boy does? Okay. I bet it runs. It's already, I mean, it's over 100 outside. It's, it's miserable. I don't know where you guys are. I'm in southwest Missouri, and I mean, I, I swear it's been over 100 for six weeks. I don't believe in global warming. I mean, we had uh, in 19, I think it was 79 and 80, 1954 and 55, 19, I think they said on the radio, 23 and 24 or something. We've had these heat spells forever. I mean, every so often in Missouri, you just have a couple of summers where it's just miserable. And this is one of them. I mean, like I say, I, I don't believe in global warming. I, If you do, great. Don't flame me. I don't. I don't mind if you do, as long as you don't mind if I don't. I, I think everybody's entitled to an opinion. Uh, I shot this gun. It is truly, it is an amazing shooter. I, I really, I didn't shoot particularly well on 
on the camera today. Um, it, you know, I, I don't I don't go out and and spot edit and shoot dozens. I mean, I generally shoot till my battery runs dry, and then I shoot after that. And you kind of get what you you know whatever I shoot early. Uh, it took me a while to get used to the gun. I was shooting a little bit low and left part of the time, and then I uh, was using three different kinds of ammo. <clears throat> my PMC was shooting a little low and left. Then I switched to some laser brass, and I was shooting just over the plates. And then I went to my uh, critical defense, and they were they were pretty good, although they tended to shoot a little high also. Um, a lot of that, I'm sure, was me. It was hot. My hands were sweaty. Um, so anyway, like I say, you know, I'm sure I'm nobody's hero anyway, but I mean, just, you know, like I say, I, I didn't shoot particularly good today, but bottom line is the gun shot great. And as the day progressed, I got more and more comfortable with it and got to where I was running the plates fairly consistent. Um, I know I showed you earlier, oh, just so everybody knows, it, it is clear. Yep, not the old bag on the floor, but um, anyway, I, I'm sure that I showed you, but it's got a fiber optic front sight that's just phenomenal. I mean, it just stood out like the lights on a fire engine. I, I loved it. I believe it's the only gun that I have that has one. Um, I think I mentioned it out the range too, but if you order a, a holster from me, um, I make a lot of the Insider. That's my principal holster anymore, and it's, it's a phenomenal holster. It really is, and it's cheap. I mean, it's 40 bucks uh, on a little bit of shipping. But anyway, if you order one, be sure and mention it, like this, uh, like this one here. I don't know if you, you can see it in the um, picture or not. Probably not. I'm not sure. But I made a full sight channel up there that goes from one end to the other. Normally, I just ramp the uh, sight channel. kind of helps with the retention a little bit. Uh, but on these type of guns, I go ahead and make a full sight channel so that there's no problem drawing. And... Uh, as you can hear, it clicks right in, uh, pops right out. I mean, it's got plenty of retention, but yet at the same time, I mean, it comes out. It will actually hold the gun, you know, where uh, some of the hybrid holsters on the market won't. But at the same time, like I say, it's not, it's not that hard to get it out. So anyway, very comfortable. Uh, I prefer horse. 99% of what I sell is horse. Now, this has been on one day. And as you can see, it's already starting to conform to my my body. So, you know, I, I recommend if you buy one, you buy a horse. Uh, the heavier the gun, the thicker the horse is how I usually tell people. Unless you're a particularly large person or just extremely sensitive, then you might need to go a little bit thinner. Uh, I also spaced this one out a little bit because I like to tuck. I normally don't do that because it causes a lot of hang issues. But if you just absolutely have to tuck, and that's that's real critical to you, let me know when you order it, and I'll space these out a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you see that, but it puts about a, an eighth, maybe a quarter inch, probably an eighth of these, three sixteenths gap for your helps your shirt go down. Like I said, it helps make it tuck. The only thing is, if you're if you're not a tucker, it does pull this away from the leather and create a little bit more of a chance of the hook hanging on something or. Be, so just just think it over. If if like I say, if the um, if the tucking is real critical to you, let me know and I'll do this. The other ones will tuck. It's just easier to tuck a, a thicker shirt like this in if I put some space in it. But you can see it does make for some flop in the hook. Where uh, the other one when I when I rivet it, and I only use two rivets. A lot of these guys are using these little press together jiffy rivets rivets and uh, I, I use two rivets that I have to actually use a ball peen hammer and a rivet set so uh, I mean they're just man they're just not coming out I mean I've I've looked at some of the other holsters and I mean you can actually take your fingers and pull and separate the plastic from the leather so uh, mine have a nice big rivet head on the back uh, they're well set on the front is it beautiful probably not I mean I make each one by hand are any two identical? Probably not. I mean, you know, but, well, I mean, not probably. They're definitely not identical. The The pattern is because I do have the, I do have a, uh, a cutter that, that cuts these with a hydraulic, with a, uh, I don't remember what they call it. It's a die cutter. But anyway, um, like I say, I'm rambling a little bit about my holster, but <clears throat> I just want you to know that, 
I mean, this is an amazing holster for 40 bucks, and uh, the uh, a lot of the competition is higher. Nobody's fits any better. Nobody's conceals any better. Um, a lot of guys, <clears throat> they've got a gimmick. I mean, they they put holes all up and down them, and they give you some, you know, screws instead of rivets, and you feel like you got a bunch of adjustability there. And you know, I don't want to get into holster arguing with somebody, but. Uh, nobody I know ever uses that. I mean, everybody just puts them where they ride level. And then with those screws, I mean, you have the screws coming loose. You have the, the things flopping around all the time. I mean, the holes in the back allow the leather in that place to crease. And I mean, I just don't do that. If you need a bunch of holes in the back, let me know. I'll, I'll pound a bunch of holes in the back of it for you. But there again, it just, I mean, it really doesn't improve anything except just makes it look cooler and makes you feel like you got some adjustability. I'm done pitching my holster. I just, uh, like I say, I just, I wanted to get that in because I don't talk about it much and I don't advertise on my channel. So once in a while, I hope you don't mind if I plug my holster a little bit. Anyway, if you're looking for a gun and you want a large bore and you don't mind a little bit less capacity, but you're looking for something slim and carryable that's not not overly heavy. Man, this thing's a winner. I mean, uh, I never had a malfunction all day. Uh, Greg, my buddy, was shooting at one time. He thought that I had uh, already racked one into the chamber. I, I typically just don't do that until I'm ready to shoot. He pulled the trigger, it didn't go off, and then when he racked it, he's a Glock man. I mean, he's not used to this. He didn't have this all the way down. And, so he couldn't get the slide to come back. It looked like a malfunction, but it really wasn't. I mean, this an XD. If you don't have your, if you don't have your finger right there, I mean, you know, it's just it's just hard to to bring that back. So, anyway, um, like I say, it's a great gun. Take a look at it. See what you think. Um, if you're looking for a big board, like I say, small gun, man, it's a winner. You know, I mean, it really is. You give up capacity, you gain a little weight. But you definitely, I mean, you, you definitely add some stopping power when you when you go to this. And I mean, this thing also was a pleasure to shoot. I had read some some comments online about the recoil, and uh, it's not, it's almost non-existent. I mean, I've shot a J frame a lot with you know plus P38s, or I've actually shot a buddy of mine's very small. I don't think it's a J frame. I don't remember what it is, maybe K-frame, 357, and I, I did a video where we shot it. It was brutal. I mean, it was brutal. I was glad to be done. I, I wish I'd have had a bicycle glove on or something, but, I mean, this is actually, you know, it's moving a heavy bullet, so, I mean, there's a little bit of recoil, but it's not at all punishing. It's very, uh, it's very smooth, too. It's not a sudden, pounding, jarring-type recoil. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just... Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's just a, a it's a good, heavy, steady recoil that's not particularly punishing. So, anyway, I'm going to get off here. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, comments, um, you know, I, I I'm toying with making a video about the movie thing because I've heard a lot of the, the movie theater, of course, and the, and the massacre in Colorado, and I, I sympathize with every family. But I, I'm really getting mad about the political comments, and I may I may make a, a video on that. I, I may not. You know, I, I hate to turn something tragedy like that into a political football, but all the liberals are doing it. So, anyway, uh, thanks a lot. Take a look at my stuff. It's uh, Fight and Gear. www.fightn just the letter n gear.com. I said make a great holster. Uh, I get a lot of requests for guns I just don't have a mold for, and I'm sorry about that, but, you know, I've spent so much money on those mold guns, and I just, at some point, you know, I, I have to factor in the number of requests that I get, and it's not always the, uh, it's not always whether the gun's common or not. I mean, it's just, it's, it's how commonly it's carried. You know, if I get a lot of requests for it, I'll buy a mold for it, but those things are 55 bucks plus freight, so... You know, I just, uh, here lately, I, I just have had to turn down some, and like I say, I apologize. I want your business. I really do. It's just at some point in a one-man shop, I, I have to cut the expenses back a little bit, or I won't be able to keep selling this holster for 40 bucks. So, anyway, thank you very much. Uh, shoot safe, and I'll see you soon.